Okay, so that's on. That's on. I think that's everything. <clears throat> Sheila's text to me. Just go ahead and ignore that. Okay, just see what the weather's going to be like today while I wait. Oh, I don't have time for that. Hi, Jess. Hi, Amber. How are you? Oh, I am very excited for today. I'm looking forward to reading out my poem. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. A bit stressed because I've left my chocolate bar at home, so now I don't have any chocolate to have with my lunch. Oh, no. I know, yeah, so a bit disappointed about that. But apart from that, not too bad at all. How's your store doing? It's in Bath, isn't it? Bath, yeah. Um, It's doing all right, thanks. We've got a bit of a ladybird infestation at the moment. <laughs> oh. Yeah. They're cute little things when there's just like one, but when there's a flock of them, they can be a real nuisance, actually. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. You can sort of do without them flying around whilst I'm eating my lunch, if you know what I mean. Getting all up in my crisps and my apple. <laughs> Nightmare. I absolutely know what you mean. And I'm sorry you're having such trouble. Oh, well, you know. Have you contacted head office or maintenance or something to get it sorted out? No, I've not done that. Oh, well, Amber, I don't think they're going to go unless you get someone in to sort it out. Oh, well, they're all right, really. (laughs) They're not really doing any harm and I wouldn't really want someone to come in and upset them. So, you know, we just sort of make do, really. Okay, well, that's up to you, uh, if you're not bothered. Oh, I am bothered, but you know. I'm not sure I do know, Amber, in all honesty, but I think we have to move on because it looks like we have another guest. Hi, Alex. Will this take longer than 10 minutes? Uh, Almost certainly. Uh, Is that okay? uh, I'm just wondering whether to um, leave the window open or not. Uh, okay. Right, what's happening in ten minutes? Uh, well, the kids next door come home and they're just, well, they're just really loud. Oh, right. Well, it, it's up to you. We will be long, uh, longer than ten minutes, but it's quite warm, so you might want to leave the window open. Yeah. Hi, Alex. It's nice to meet you. Where's the other winner? Sean. Uh, he'll be here any minute. Probably late, as usual. Oh. Not really, I was just joking. <laughs> um, well, to be fair, he is late. Well, I did I did say to be here around this time, so it doesn't matter if he's a bit later. Mm, he's not usually late, I was just joking when I said that. That's all right, Amber. He'll, he'll be here soon, I'm sure. Are you making notes, Alex? Yeah. Uh, I'm just writing down that Sean was late, so I can add it to my review. Oh, no. Alex, he's not late. I just I said to be here at approximately this time. And besides, he's trying to manage two different stores at the moment because of staff shortages, so he's very busy. Jess, she's writing again. What are you writing, Alex? I'm writing down that you shouted at me. I can then add it into my review. I wasn't shouting. I wasn't. I wasn't shouting. Okay. I'll. Uh... I'll write that down. No, Alex, I wasn't shouting. I was just saying. I was just saying. Right. Look, here he is. Finally. Hi, Jess. I'm so sorry I'm late. I'm having a nightmare at the moment. I'm trying to manage two stores at once. Staff aren't turning up. Customers are complaining. They do little else. That's all right. Head office told me you were doing that, so that's all good. Honestly, it's so hard to get the staff. They leave. They don't want to work. They have second jobs, which take priority. And we didn't even get the budget to hire new staff members. What's, what's this? About staff shortages? The discount bookshop isn't having uh, money problems, is it? <laughs> I mean, it's it's not so much... Th- I just... Sorry, Sean. I just want to say quickly that Alex Lucas is here to review not only the winning poems, but this event as a whole. So just be aware that anything you might say or do, you know, could end up in a local newspaper article. Well, I have got better things to do than uh, try and get the latest gossip on the discount bookshop, Jess. Yes, well, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page here. Oh, dear. I'm not sure I'm following... What, what do you mean about this being an event? Sean, we're the winners of the competition. I think he knows that, don't you? Winners? I, 
I did. I did email you. Sure. Sorry, I'm completely lost. You and Amber are the winners of Caroline Hodgson Brown's poetry competition, and the prizes were a copy of Caroline Hodgson Brown's poetry book, Poems for a Discount Bookshop, a professional review in the local newspaper, and an appearance on the Discount Bookshop podcast. Did you not know that, Sean? I literally didn't know any of that, no. I I haven't had a chance to check my emails for weeks, though. Very unprofessional. Not really, Alex. He's been really busy managing two stores, and I've ju- you've you've just been sitting behind your computer judging other people. Actually, I um I prefer to write by hand. Um, if Sean didn't know what his prizes would be, can I have a copy of his Caroline's poetry book, please? Be my guest. No, no, no. Everyone, please stop. Okay, a- Amber. He won those prizes fair and square. So please, you you keep your prizes, and and Sean can keep his. No, that's all right. I don't really want it anyway. Oh, thanks, Sean. Sean, Caroline isn't going to want to hear that her book has been simply given away when she worked tirelessly to write it. But it's going to a better home. Mm, I'll look after it. I've got space on my bookshelf in here, actually, and I'll put it next to my statue of the otter. Your what? My otter statue. Oh, nice. Yeah, thanks. I bought it in holiday, on holiday, whilst I was in Cornwall and at first I thought it wouldn't fit in my suitcase and then I threw some of my clothes away and then sorry are we just gonna sit here talking about otters all day or can we get on with reading some actual poetry Alex is right I must get on with introducing the podcast so that we can celebrate these two wonderful competition entries great everyone ready so will you just cut all of that out uh if I remember Probably not. Okay, here we go. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 24 of the Discount Bookshop podcast. And what's that sound in the background? What could it be? It sounds like a celebration. Sorry, it's the kids next door. I told you they might be loud. No, Alex, the listeners don't know you're here yet. You can't say... (sighs) Oh my god, I love those. Can I have one? Amber! I don't think we're supposed to talk yet. No, guys, come on. Alex, stop writing in your notebook. Well, my readers need to know that you started the event by shouting at us. I'm not... (coughs) Yes, you guessed it. That sound means that it's time to celebrate. And what are we celebrating, I hear you ask? Why, of course, it's the Discount Bookshop podcast's second anniversary. (coughs) Yes, for two long, long years, I have been hosting the Discount Bookshop podcast the podcast which keeps you up to date on everything The Discount Bookshop. We've heard stories, songs, music, jokes. We've had highs and lows, good guests and also other guests. And of course, we've had competitions to celebrate the release of Caroline Hodgson Brown's first published book, Poems for a Discount Bookshop. Caroline in head office thought it might be an idea to hold a company-wide poetry writing competition to help people find their inner poet and also to try and sell some copies of this book because it's been out for a while now and they are just not shifting. Anyway, today I have with me the two winners of the poetry competition and they are sales assistant from our bath in from our store in Bath, Amber Coombe. Hi everyone! And assistant manager of our store in Deal, Kent, Sean Matthews. Hello! And in a moment of what some may call madness... Caroline also decided it might be a good idea to involve a reviewer or critic to give their opinion on the winning seri- the winning entries. So welcome also, Alex Lucas. It's a real thrill to be here. It is a thrill, isn't it? I can't wait. Okay, well, welcome all. I think we might as well just get straight into it. So Amber, would you like to introduce your winning poem? Okay. <clears throat> well... Uh, my poem is called My Cat. Okay, well, begin when you're ready. Okay. My Cat 
a poem by Amber Coombe, which is me. My cat likes a pat. He likes a scratch, but he doesn't play catch. My cat likes a mat. He likes his toy bat, but he doesn't wear a hat. He wanders around at night, my cat, inside and outside, both. I wonder what he sees, my cat, what keeps him on his toes. Does he see any hedgehogs, or perhaps a mouse? Does he watch them out the window of our house? Does he daydream at night, or simply go to sleep? Or does he stay comfy and still, or does he try to leap? Does he have ambitions, perhaps to become a mime? He's a very good physical comedy person. He does it all the time. Yesterday, he fell off a chair down the back of the TV. An actor or presenter. Maybe that's what he wants to be. I just hope whatever he's thinking, it is positive and light. He brings joy in my life and makes everything all right. I love that cat more each time we hug, except for last weekend when he threw up on my fluffy new rug. Well, well done, Amber. Oh, thanks, everyone. I didn't expect such a big reaction. You're making me blush. (laughs) That was really good, Amber. I, I loved the ending. It was very funny. Oh, well, it wasn't funny at all, to be honest. We had to throw the rug out in the end, so, yeah. Well, that is unfortunate. Um, I'll just read you now Caroline Hodgson-Brown's comments on your poem. Uh, she, of course, was the judge of the poetry competition, so let's see what she had to say. I loved the repetition of the words, my cat. I could easily see why you made that the title of the piece. I enjoyed the descriptive nature of the poem. I really felt that I could picture the scene. Overall, I felt that you used a good combination of real life experience and imagination to give the poem a relatable yet fantastical energy. Good work. Wow. So there you go, Amber. Great comments there. Okay. I'd just like to take a moment to thank my family and friends just for being so supportive of my work. Well, they didn't want to read it, but I know that that's because they just wanted it to be a surprise. So, And I'd like to thank my old school teacher, Miss Fillmore Hovis, for just believing in me. Um, and actually, I'd also like to thank the customers who come into my branch of the discount bookshop. You all make every day worth working and just inspire me to just be the best version of myself. Can I just interject? Well, you just have, so... I wondered if you'd um, you'd like to hear my thoughts now before I write them in my review. Of course. Good. I would love that. Um, you might want to sit down. Oh, no. Okay, I am sitting down, so... <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Well, first of all, I thought that the personification of the cat... Um, was a bad choice and uh, it actually completely uh, undermined the way that cats live their lives. What do you mean? Well, for starters, have you ever heard of a cat wanting to be an actor or magician or, or whatever it is you said? Presenter. I mean, to be fair, I don't think it was meant to be realistic, but it, it, it was imaginative. I like that. Well, I thought the tone of it was confusing, unfocused. The language was all over the place. The rhythm was uh, patchy. The structure was all oh, right, but the, the form. I'm not even going to go in to what I thought about the form. I think this is very harsh. Yeah, it's a little bit. <laughs> I think it's absolutely uncalled for, to be honest. Jess, you called for it. You asked me to come on here and critique the poems. Yeah, but I thought you might be just like, yeah, I thought it was really good and interesting and we can all learn a lot from the piece. Well, exactly. Are we meant to learn from this piece, Jess? I mean, I learned that it's hard to clean a fluffy rug, so... 
And I learned that cats can hug. I didn't know that before. I guess I learned that I'm not very good at writing poetry. No, you are good at writing poetry, Amber. Yeah, and besides, your poetry can't ever be wrong because it's art. That wasn't art. It is art, and art can't be wrong. Well, that poem proved that it can. What are you writing down? Oh, nothing. Just writing a little review to send to head office. Of what? Of you and your behaviour. My behaviour? I'm a reviewer! I'm supposed to voice my opinion! I know that, but I think that actually in this context you've been very unfair and unkind to Amber, and I think that needs to be reported. How many times do I need to remind you that I am a reviewer? You asked me to come here and give you my opinion on the poems. There's no need to be mean. This is ridiculous. I don't have time for this. Is there another one or not? Sean, would you like to introduce your poem when you're ready? Uh, Okay. Uh, I don't even remember writing this, so it will be interesting. Uh, Here we go. Busy Mind. A poem by Sean Matthews. There's a lot on my mind when I wake up each morning. It started two weeks ago, and since then I haven't stopped yawning. So much to think about and so much to do. So many people to see and so many to reply to. How did I end up here? Did I take on too much? As I sit here staring at the wall whilst eating my lunch. Should I have rejected taking on more responsibility? Or would I have regretted missing out on the opportunity? So much to consider as I sit here at my desk. Writing poetry. Printing documents. Daydreaming. So much to consider as I sit here at my desk. Taking phone calls, putting together rotors for the weeks ahead, checking with customer services that a customer's order hasn't got lost in transit. A busy mind in a busy environment. A busy mind in a chaotic day. A busy mind taking a minute. Busy mind unwind. was amazing that was great sean oh thanks yes and i have judges comments here from caroline hodgson brown of course she said very interesting work here i feel the frustration of the piece and feel that i can easily put myself in their shoes it makes me want to know more about the poet and what they're going through as it feels based on truth i loved it yeah I, i mean i barely even remember writing the poem but i imagine it was based on how i was feeling at the time because I'd, I'd, I'd just taken on managing two different stores and I was finding it a challenge. You can tell it comes from the heart. You absolutely can, and it's, it's great that you managed to let your feelings out into something creative. It was surprisingly helpful, actually. Alex, anything to say? Sure, no, save yourself. I, I must be brave, Amber, if you had to face the critics, and so do I. All right. There's no need to be so dramatic. I liked it. Hmm? I liked it. Really? Why are you so surprised? Well, we all heard... All right, if you say so. Thank you. What exactly did you like about it, Alex? Oh, let me guess. You liked it when it ended. No, I liked the tone of the poem. I thought it felt personal and relatable anything else sure i liked other parts of it which parts alex you know i yeah what did you write down in your notebook nothing you definitely wrote down some notes, I saw you. Oh, that wasn't to do with this. Uh, those were for something else. <sighs> Alright, fine. I wrote down things that I didn't like about it for my review. I knew it. Alex! Come on then. Let's hear it. 
I can take a bit of constructive criticism. Okay, well, I thought that it was obvious from the start that the speaker in the poem was the poet. It didn't fool me for a second. I wasn't trying to fool anyone. I thought that the structure was predictable, as was the form, the rhyming scheme was irregular, it was messy, there was too much repetition of the word busy. Um, it just made the ending feel, well, busy. That was literally the point, that it felt busy. The poem's called Busy Mind. What else did I write down? Uh, too many words. Too long. I didn't like the rhyming. Uh, oh, sorry, I can't, can't read my writing. Uh... Alex, what's constructive about that criticism? Well, maybe if they take my criticisms on board, next time their poems won't be bad. That was really upsetting. I am a reviewer. Yeah, well, not a very good one. You can't just dislike everything. Have you ever written a good review? What would be the point in that? (sighs) All right, when will the review be up, Alex? When I have time. And when do you think that will be? Friday. All right, thanks for stopping by, Alex. You're welcome. Um, Can I go now? I have all the notes that I need. I look forward to reading your review. No doubt it will be fair and well balanced. Can I go now? Yes, you can go now. Thanks for being on the Discount Bookshop pot... Oh, she's gone already. Oh, thank goodness for that. I thought she'd never leave. Yeah, it's a shame about what just happened there. How are you both feeling? Amber? Sad. Sean? Stressed. Okay, well, at least the two of you won Caroline's poetry competition. I don't feel great about it, to be honest. I kind of wish I'd just never entered. Well, come on, you two. Just just think. You'll get your writing published in a newspaper. And you got to have a good chat on the podcast. Not, not to mention you got to hear each other's entries. Okay, well, what if I were to tell you that there's another prize which you've won, which is one which you didn't know about, which you did win? What's that then? Well, there's actually a secret prize which you received if you came on the podcast. And since you're both here... What is it? It is... Cash. How much are we talking? We're talking £100. £100 each. Oh my goodness, Jess, that's amazing. Well, actually, I meant £100 between you. Thank, but thank you so much, Jess. That's that's really generous. Well, actually, the thing is... Oh, I'm so happy I came along now. Me too. This is the only positive thing that's happened to me for weeks. Oh, I'm so happy. Good. I'm glad. It's just that... Just that... What, Jess? Sorry, I'm so excited. I keep interrupting you. Um. Well, it's just that I'm really glad you're happy and I'm just so impressed with your poems so do we need to like pick it up from somewhere or uh no I'll um I'll make sure it gets sent over to you okay should we let you know our details or uh uh sure great thanks so much Jess all right then time to leave it there i think uh thank you so much for being on the discount bookshop podcast thank you so much for having me yeah thanks jess and thank you so much for that extra prize all right bye then bye jess bye why would i say that 100 pounds even between them that's a lot but 100 pounds each how am i going to afford that head office aren't going to give me that money why would i say that Okay. Thanks for listening, everyone, to this episode 24 of the Discount Bookshop podcast. I'm very proud to have been doing this podcast for two whole years, and I'm very grateful to everyone who's been a guest on the podcast so far. Simon Winters, Alison Damson, Bryn Jones, Valerie Keither, Rachel Stair, Monica Crampton, Sophie Ford, and of course, today's guests, Sean Matthews, Amber Coombe, and Alex Lucas. Also, big thanks to my colleagues, Andrew and Melissa, who watch the shop while I'm podcasting. 
and thank you to all of you for listening please take the time to click like subscribe for more content and give this podcast a good rating if you enjoyed join me next time where we'll be starting year three of the podcast aka episode 25 all right thanks a lot